Welcome to West Coast Wednesdays. I'm Mark Herzl, the district manager here at A.N. Derringer in Los Angeles, California, where you know that sun, it's always shining. Hey, the other day I was asked, what's the best way to ship just a few cartons? As simple as this question may initially sound, it is truly profound as the answer depends upon a, a multitude of factors in a dynamic calculus. Now, the first assumption is that the goods are moving under INCO terms where you are responsible for the international carriage. Now, if you have any questions about INCO terms, go ahead and uh, check out the video blog by uh, Derringer's own Matt Parrott, and he'll make sure that he answers those. Then you need to know when the shipment will be ready for pickup at origin. You need to know where the transportation carriage is to begin, where the delivery is to terminate, and then when or by what date delivery must be accomplished. Often, in this analysis alone, you can determine if the mode of transportation should be air, truck, rail, or ocean. Now, in general, the longer it takes to get there, the lower it costs. So ocean freight is often the least expensive mode, but it isn't always the lowest. Rail is the next most cost-effective mode, and then trucking. But these options aren't available when crossing oceans. Now, when you get to air, the most expensive mode of all, there are still some options. Because in air transport, slightly lower rates may cause a shipment to be split over more than one flight or be routed via connecting airport when competing against uh, other options who have uh, paid the highest must-fly rates. Now, although ocean cargo is often the most effective of all these modes, it may also have minimums, and that can negate the cost savings, So, the, especially on small shipments. So if your ocean freight is less than one CBM, that's one cubic meter in volume or under 100 kilos in weight, it still charged the full one CBM rate. So a 0.2 CBM shipment may be less expensive to move by air because it's still charged at the one CBM rate. Now, this rule also holds true for air cargo within uh, minimums are more likely 45 kilos, but you can't just look at the weight because in air freight, it's based upon the actual gross mass or the volumetric cargo, whichever is the highest. It's a somewhat complicated formula that's better left for another day, but the bottom line is that for the very smallest of the shipments, well below these chargeable rate minimums, the courier service is sometimes the most likely cost-effective option. Now, the last question is the transit cost versus the inventory carrying cost. Sometimes the inventory carrying cost drives the mode choice. This is why you never see integrated circuits shipped by ocean. They move by air because they are relatively expensive and small in both volume and weight. And why you seldom see ceramic tiles shipped by air. They're more commonly moved by ocean because they are relatively inexpensive and heavy. Now this solution are, is, is also, uh, this equation, excuse me, is further complicated by the fact that carrier capacities fluctuate, uh, carriers consolidate, leading to both routing and rate changes. So basically your transportation solution yesterday may not be the best solution for tomorrow. Now the good news is that no matter you're moving one carton or one million cartons, Derringer stands ready to assist you in finding the best transportation solutions for your needs. Now go out there and have a great Wednesday.